Hi, guys. This is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today I want to show you everything that you can get if you join my monthly online card club. This is for the month of March uh, 2024. I'm featuring the Painted Lavender Bundle, and I'm also featuring the Perennial Postage Bundle. Uh, those are there are two add-ons. I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. But I want to show you first everything you get if you join, uh, if you're a member of my club. Uh, it's $39.50 a month, so this is what you get for that. And I'll give you all the particulars here in a minute. But you get a pack, let's see, card kits, pack of card kits. It's four card designs, and you're going to have to make two of each. I do all the embossing for you and any die cutting done with that is not part of the featured bundle or the bundles. Since I've got two bundles, I'm not doing any of the die cutting with those two bundles, but I am doing all the embossing. So you get those card kits there. You're also going to get a full pack. Pretend like this is a full pack until I've been using it. <laughs> the uh, paper butterflies accents. You'll also get a full pack of the uh, purple fine shimmer gems. And you'll see all the colors here. The Highland Heather ones are kind of hidden up here. There's Gorgeous Grape and Berry Burst. And there are two sizes in each one. So everybody will get a full pack of this. And they'll also get a half pack of this beautiful Perennial Lavender DSP. When I say DSP, that's Designer Series Paper, by the way. But I love this paper. It's just so pretty. So this is the one side. There's the other side. Then, got these two, this side and this is the other side to it. Got this one and this one. So what this is, these are six by 12 inch pieces that I just cut the pack in half. So you get two of each design. Then we've got this one and this one. So these are this one side and that's the other side. And there's each side of that one. And each side of that one. So that's the whole pack. So you get two of each design and they are six by 12 sheets. So I'll show you that so you can see the whole thing. But I wanted to, it's easier. It looks better to look at the designs this way. So that's why I showed it to you that way. Now I give my club members an add-on that they can pick from. But this time I'm going to have two add-ons. The first one is the Painted Lavender Bundle. Uh, the reason I'm doing two is because this one is a complete image set. And we needed to have one that had sentiments to it too. So this one, if they want to purchase it, is $46.75. And that is all they pay because I've already, I'm not going to pay the shipping and tax for this. So it's still the $39.50 for the subscription price, but this is an add-on for $46.75. They get to save 18% because I pay the shipping and tax for them. Now, and this is the one I'm saying they, if they want to have the painted lavender, make sure they get this because they can easily substitute the sentiments with another sentiment set they have on hand. But that's this one. But I am, like I said, giving them a second option. They can also get the perennial postage bundle. Love this one. Um, these are all the sentiments. These are actually, I'm using everything that is inside the um, perennial lavender suite. So this is also part of that suite. And I won't be doing the die cutting with these, but the cardstock is just a little bit bigger than the dies that I'm going to give you. So you can die cut it yourself. So if you don't want to die cut it, it's fine. It'll be a nice little size for your sentiment. But this is what I'm using here. And I can't remember if I give you the price, but it's $51.25. And once again, I am paying the shipping and tax for this too. Okay, now I said I did want to give you all the particulars. I'll just get to you real quick. Actually, what you could do is just go down to the video description and click on the link to my monthly online card club. I've got that right there. And you can get all the information there. But it is $39.50. And once again, you get all of this. I just showed you a little bit ago. That's what everybody will get. And then they have the option to add on one or both of these bundles okay but you can get all the information there paypal is what i do the subscriptions through you do not have to have an account with paypal to subscribe you just click that subscribe button that's on that page for my monthly online card club and just give the information there and uh, you're good to go and you can cancel any time you just go back to uh, your account uh, to your subscription for through paypal and cancel it um, but you'll want to stay a member at, for at least six months. For every six months you are a member, and has to be continuous six months, you'll get a $25 bonus of product sent to you. So at, every six months you'll get that. Now, if you ever quit the club and come back, then you, the six months starts all over again. So that is six months continuous. 
Okay, now the, re the rest of this video is just going to show you how my club works because I'm actually going to be making the first card of club. This is how I've been doing it for the last couple months. I make the actual first card for club. Everybody gets to see it. That way you get an idea how uh, I do my club video, my exclusive club video, which will be the other three cards in the club. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you the card. Love this one. I have so much fun making these. A painted lavender set is so pretty. So this will be the first one I'm going to do. So what my club members will do, you, they do also get a PDF that goes along with this. A PDF does not have instructions, but does have the supply list. It has all of the dimensions of the cardstock if they want to make some more other than the two that they'll have the supplies for. And it also has links to all the videos for the club. So what, I'll, what I tell them is just go to their PDF, get all their supplies together and come back and make the card with me. Okay, from the Painted Lavender uh, set, you're going to need these three stamps right here. You're going to need this die, and you're also going to need the stem die. And that's all. We're, oh, and we're also going to need this one right here. So th that's everything we need from this bundle. And then from the perennial postage, you need the I can't thank you enough, and then you also need the third largest rectangle. This is the largest. That's the second largest. And then there's a set of rectangles down here. So this would be the third largest. So it's actually the largest one in this little group of one, two, three, four. I couldn't remember if there's four or not. So that's the die I'm going to need for that. Okay, now we need to get the DSP out that we need. So we're going to go through here. We're actually going to use a few of these. Let's see, we need, let's see, no, not that one. Okay, we need this one. Oh, we do need this one. That's right. We need this side. So we need this one. And last but not least, this one right here. So those are the three that you need to get. We need a, a three quarter by five and a quarter inch piece from each one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to line up the three quarter inch over here on the right side. I'm right handed. It just makes it easier. The nice thing with our trimmer, there's a little ruler over here for up to an one and a half inches. So that gives me that strip. So I'm going to do that with all th uh, three of these. So bring this one in. Do it three quarter. Oops, that's my scoring tool blade. We need the cutting one. <laughs> and then last but not least, this one. And once again, do it at three and a quarter, uh, three quarter inch. Okay. Now we need these to be five and one quarter in length. So I'll do five and a quarter here. Now I am just gonna cut one. If you wanna go ahead and cut the other one for your uh, second card, go right ahead and you just get it out of that strip. Do another five and a quarter here. Same with all of these. You can get your other five and a quarter inch out of that same strip. I had to cut my fingernails today and they're not wanting to pick things up. And then another five and a quarter. Okay, so that's all we need of the paper. Okay, first off, I'm gonna get some stamping done and I'm gonna grab the half sheet of basic white that I put in the kit. I give a half sheet for all the stamping that needs to be done. That way, in case uh, you're using a different bundle, you can, uh, you'll can you have plenty of cardstock to make your uh, cards. So this will be enough for both cards, but like I said, I'm just making one. I'm gonna grab the narrow so there's one of the flowers that is a little uh, wider. Get this one that's narrow and get gorgeous grape. We need to stamp two of these. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between them. So I'll do one right here and one right here. I think it's easier to line this up if you start with a darker color first because now we're going to use Fresh Freesia, which is lighter. And I'll be able to see, here, if I ink this wider one up, now I'll be able to see that gorgeous grape underneath and be able to line it up. Now, one thing I've seen, it makes it a little easier. See this little V kind of thing right here? There's one right here. Just kind of line that up so the dark purple one is at the bottom of the wider V at the bottom. And then kind of look at the rest of it and see if it looks good because it does not line up perfectly. It's actually supposed to be like that. And sometimes I like it when it doesn't have, you don't have to get it just right. I'm just kind of paying, looking at the bottom and then making sure that there's a little stem that goes across here that it's kind of in the middle with the rest of it. So it's looking at the stem and looking at that little V and then push it down 
and that lines it up pretty doggone good. <laughs> so we've got those ready to go, and now I want to grab my shaded spruce. I'm going to take the stem, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, you know what, I'm going to go this way, I think. The way I'm thinking, I want to make sure everything's a little far enough away that I can put uh, more than one die on it when I put it through. Now, there is only one die to do this and one die to do that, so I am going to, have to put it through twice. But I want like to plan it out so I don't have to put it, through as, uh, put it through as few times as possible. So put this to the side. Then you need to grab that crumb cake piece. This one is a three by two and a quarter. And I'm going to grab the I Can't Thank You Enough and my gorgeous scrape ink pad again. Let's uh, see if I can get it not wanting to cooperate. There we go. Ink that up. A lot of times when there's a stamp that has a lot of rubber around the greeting, I like to turn it over so I can see, make sure I didn't get ink where I don't want it. I'm going to stamp this near the middle. So put this to the side. That is all. No, wait. Do need to stamp the inside. So grab this piece of basic white, four by five and a quarter, and we're going to stamp one of those... Um, Oh, flowers again, one of the lavenders. So I'm going to grab this one. This is with the gorgeous grape again, which is wanting to be a pain today. <laughs> I usually don't have that much trouble opening them. I'm going to put this one up just a little bit, and over a little bit, because I want to have room for that fresh freesia since it's a little bit wider. I think it's easier to stamp the flowers first and then do the stem. Then I'm going to put this on. Once again, that V you want on the bottom and kind of look at that center stem that's going up to get it straight. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this. And I am using my stamp and pierce mat since this is a photopolymer stamp set. I'm probably going to get a little ink on here, but I'll wash it off later because this is all I need to stamp. So I don't need to worry about ink being on here and messing it up. There we go. Actually, I can just take this. Yep, that took it off just fine. This is the chamois that came with my glass mat. Okay, now that is all the stamping we need to do, so get the die cutting machine out. Okay, to get our stamp and cut emboss machine to, uh, ready for die cutting, you need the base platform number one, die plate number two, and then a the standard cutting plate number three. I'm going to grab my half sheet first. I'm going to get the stem. Get that lined up just right. There we go. I had to get my microphone out of the way so I could see. Sometimes it's hard to line things up when you're at an angle. Okay, and then I need to grab this one. We just line this up. That looks pretty good. Just make sure you get the image to fill in that opening in the die. And when I put my uh, post-it uh, tape down. Always make sure I get part, uh, part of the tape in the inside of the die. That helps it stay on a lot better because sometimes it'll still move if only if you only get it on the outside. Then I'm going to grab my standard cutting plate here. And if you don't have post-it tape, if you have post-it notes, you can just use the adhesive part of a post-it note too. It work just as good. And uh, if you don't have any of those, washi tape would work too. And last but not least, painter's tape. But I strongly suggest the post-it adhesive because it is, doesn't tear up the cardstock at all. Painter's tape is what I used to use. You just have to be real careful with that, especially with white cardstock, but the post-it tape works really, really good. Okay, so there's the stem. Oh, it good. I lined that up pretty good. I was a little nervous about that one because my microphone was in the way and I couldn't see what I was doing. Then we've got the lavender. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now I'm going to die cut the rest of these just like the first first set. Okay, so now we've got our second set. Now we'll go ahead and put those dies away. I'm going to get this out of the way because now I need to grab the greeting. And I also want to grab the piece of shaded spruce that's in the pack. This is a four by one and a half inch piece. I'm going to grab that postage die that I said to get out. Kind of get that right in the middle. I forgot this is kind of big. So yeah, I did do that piece the way I was thinking. There we go. So you don't have to cut it down unless you just want to. 
to make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be, which helps because that way I can uh, angle that the way I want it. Now I'm going to move this just a little bit because I think it works a lot better if the, a small corner of a rectangle die goes through first. It makes it so it doesn't crunch, it doesn't warp the die. So just to have the a smallest part, like a corner, go through first and the die cuts perfectly. And then we're going to grab that leaf branch there to put on the shaded spruce. I'm not going to worry about putting tape on that since I'm not keeping it around an image. I just need to make sure it's still on the cardstock before I run it through. Run this through. And now we've got this pretty piece. You can see all the pieces just falling out that are supposed to fall out. It's so nice. So that one's ready to go. And then last but not least, we've got the postage cut out. Okay, now that is all the die cutting we need to do. Let's get this out of the way and finish the card. Okay, first off, I'm going to fold my card base. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of gorgeous grape. I love the purples. This gorgeous grape it is definitely gorgeous. It is just, uh, it's a bright, beautiful uh, uh, purple. Got right, I say green. Beautiful purple. And then I always use my bone folder to get a good crease. And I did forget to say when I uh, start folding, I just line up the corners. It's a lot easier than looking at every single side to make sure you've got it straight. Just get those corners and that usually uh, folds it perfectly for your card base. Now I'm going to grab a piece of uh, fresh freesia. This is a four by uh, five and a quarter. And then I'm going to grab those three DSP pieces that we uh, cut a minute ago. Okay, now you can use whichever side you want. I did this one first. So I'm going to turn this one over, grab my seal. And just put a few little runs of it. I want to make sure those are all going the right direction. And this is going to go here along the left side. I'm just going to leave a little bit of fresh freesia showing on the left, not much. Go like this, it'll go right across to the top. And now I'm going to use this purple side here. Put my adhesive on here. I'm just going to leave a little space like I did here. Like so. This is a good way to be able to show a lot of different designs in the paper. It made it so I could do three of my favorites. Be able to show them all on one card. And this one's going to go right here. And once again, leaving about the same space in between. There we go. So that is ready to go. So we can go and put this on the card base. Oh, I do have a little bit of paper hanging over. So I'm going to go ahead and get a hold of this. Cut this off, mainly this one. The other one's not too bad. You see it just a little bit. As long as I have my scissors right up against my uh, the Fresh Freesia cardstock, it cuts really straight. Okay, now I can put this on my card base. Get that adhesive on there. Bring this back in. This will go on like so. Now I'm going to grab the greeting. I'm going to put some adhesive on it. And it's going to go down here like so, about right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to grab my silicone craft mat. For those of you that have been in my club for at least six months, you've already got one of these because it's about come, one of these. This is one of the things that comes in your $25 bonus the first time around. Um, I'm going to grab my multi-purpose glue and grab this guy. Now I'm just going to put some in a few places just to hold it down really well. So any place that I'm seeing that's a little bit wider than others. And I'm not going to go all the way to the top because I kind of liked it. It almost looks like it's got a little bit of a dimensional under it if you don't go all the way to the top. I think I'm just about out of glue on this one. I'm afraid to push too hard because I don't want it to come out too fast. Oops, just like that. <laughs> That's why I use my silicone mat here. Let me show you a trick. I'm not going to worry because what I can do is turn this over because that's way too much glue there. Kind of take some of that off. There we go. There's still enough on there that's going to glue just fine. And this is going to go right here. I'm going kind of bring it up a little bit because I don't want to cover up my greeting. But that looks pretty good. So now I can hold that down. And then I can, once that glue dries on there, I can peel it off and throw it away. 
That's what I love about that silicone mask. When that happens, you can fix it. <laughs> Normally, we've been like, oh, I better just die cut another one. But that saved it. Okay, so now I'm going to grab these. And I'm going to put, you know what, I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I'm going to bring the glue back in again. Just a teeny bit of glue. I'm just going to put it right here at the bottom of this one. I'm going to lay this stem down. And on this one, I'm going to kind of put the little V here within that V of those top leaves. This one, I want to be a little taller than the other one. Maybe bring it down just a little bit more. And that's the nice thing about using the glue. I can move it down a little bit when it's still a little wet. There, that's good. So just a little bit of it is on there. Don't worry about it. We're going to make it uh, anchor it a lot better here in just a minute. I'm going to grab that other stem. And this one here. And this one I'm going to put, have it go up a little bit higher, just a little bit higher. Because I wanted this one to be shorter. So I'm going to bring it down here. So I've really only got one of these little stems that come out showing. Hold that down till the glue takes hold. Okay. Now we're done with the glue. For now, we are going to need it again for the butterfly. I'm going to turn the, both of these over. And I'm going to use some uh, dimensionals. And this one, I'm going to make sure I go right over that stem, the top of it. And that will anchor that. Now, this one has a little more of the stem up here, so it's not... I'm not so worried about it, but that should be pretty good. Now with this one, I want to definitely make sure I get at least the, the very tip of that on there. Okay. And then I'll grab another one here. And here at the very tip top, I'm going to take some half ones here. So I need to grab my scissors. Here, I'll just, since I'm already working on this edge, I'll go ahead and take start with this one. I'll put a little half one up here, like so. Grab the other one I cut, and I'll put it on like that. I'm going to take the paper backings off. I always use my Take Your Pick tool. I'm just going to ang I angle it and then just scoop up those uh, paper backings. Okay. Those are, and now they're all on here, and I can just take them off and throw them away. I'm going to grab the longest one, the tallest one, and it's going to go a little bit of an angle. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. Put it there, and then this one is going to crisscross, be down a little bit, still making sure I don't cover up any of that greeting. There we go. We're just about done, but now we need those butterflies. So I'm going to grab this until I've used a few of these already. I need, looks like I've got some that are already off the sheet. Yep, and this is the one I need, so I'll just grab this one. So grab the smallest here. I'll get all of these off so you can see the different sizes here, and this is the one that I used. You can use whichever one you want, of course. That's the nice thing about getting the whole pack. You get to use whatever you want to from it. I'm going to bring in my silicone mat again. Since I still have some glue on here, you can see which side looks the best. They're about the same. I'm going to pick up a little glue right here. And I think that's going to be just enough. And then I can put this on here. I mainly put it on the uh, body of the butterfly. Hold it down. And now these can kind of look like they're, he's flying away because they're not attached. And let's go ahead and put the inside in. We are just about done with this first card. So put this here. Put this on the inside. And then I'm, I'm going to grab the gems. Okay, now I can show you all the colors too. So they're the Pretty Highland Heather Gorgeous Grape and Berry Burst. So I'm going to be using, oh, I'm sorry, the Gorgeous Grape ones. I wanted to go with the card base. So I'm going to grab a large one. Oops, got that coming out a little too much. Grab a large one. I'm going to put it, let's see, I think I'll put it right here. And I need two small ones. So I'll grab a small one from over here, put it right here, and then I'll grab another 
small one and I'm going to put it right about there. And you know what? Since there's a big area there, I'm going to change it from my original, which you can do that too. And I'm going to put another little one right here with it. There we go. I thought I needed a little bit more. I should have stamped that a little bit farther. So if you're watching this before you get your card kit, stamp it down a little farther. I think that'll probably look a little better. Now, if you live in the United States and do not have a demo of your own, I would be happy to send out the, uh, a set of the catalogs that are going on right now. This is January to April mini catalog and the annual catalog, both of these end at the end of April. And just click that contact me link below and then um, give me your mailing address and I'll mail these out to you right away. Okay, I think that's it. Let me bring the card back in. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you again in the next video. Bye, guys.